Goldman Sachs just recently put out a report favoring dividend stocks over pretty strong company stocks. So typically there are two ways a company can take their profits and reward the investors. One of those ways is by paying a dividend. The other way is by share buybacks. Now, in some cases, it does both. But see, what the report is saying is that the companies that are buying back shares are not going to do as well as the companies that pay dividends. It's kind of interesting. So let's dig into it. So as per the report, in the first quarter of 2023, those companies that paid dividends listed in the S&P 500 grew by 8% year over year, whereas buybacks slid by 11% in the last year's third quarter and by 21% in the fourth quarter. So if we look at this chart by Y charts right here, we can see the increase in the S&P 500 dividends per share. That's what this is referring to. So if we look here, of course, we have that 1754. And then right here, quarter one of 2022 at $16.25. That represents right around a 7.9% increase with the S&P 500. Now remember, the S&P 500, top 500 companies listed on the S&P 500 stock market index. But those that pay dividends, that is a fairly nice increase. And that, of course, outpaced the dreaded inflation. But then buybacks, as noted right here, have been on a decline in the last year. And most recently in March, down 11% just like was mentioned on the Goldman Sachs report. So the question is, what type of dividend stock should we be keeping our eye on that are set to maybe outperform the other companies that are also well-known that are doing buybacks? That's what we need to dig into in just a moment. But first, let's talk a little bit about these buybacks and why they are still a very good thing to do. See, the idea behind a stock buyback is that these strong companies, typically tech companies or new companies, get an opportunity to positively influence their stock price, thereby ultimately returning unrealized growth to the investors. So for example, what could be $10 a share after the buybacks could be now $12 a share. See, as a company issues more shares, right? More shares outstanding to raise capital so they can invest and continue to grow the company. Well, that can dilute the share price because there's more supply out there. Let's think about it in a way that actually makes sense. Let's say this softball is signed by a famous person like Babe Ruth. Now I know Babe Ruth was a baseball player. I don't have a baseball handy, but let's say he signed this particular softball. But this softball with Babe Ruth's signature on it is really, really important because there's not too many available. This is a very rare limited item. And on top of that, it's something that people want. People would love to have a signed ball by Babe Ruth, but not a whole lot exists. So if I go out and I sell my baseball or my softball with Babe Ruth's signature on it, I could tend to make a lot of money. But what if Babe Ruth actually got around to it and he ended up signing every single baseball and softball on the market, genuinely actually signed every single one of them? Well, then my softball wouldn't be worth as much money, would it? Because it's not as rare as it would be if he only signed like two of these in the whole world. See, the same thing goes with shares. If a company has a lot of outstanding shares, well, then of course there's a lot of shares on the market and therefore the price may not be that strong. But if they buy back shares and they reduce the amount of shares outstanding, it could influence the price significantly. It could bring it up, especially if there's a lot of demand and a lot of value given to that particular company. But then coming back to dividends, Goldman Sachs says the S&P 500 dividend should grow right around 5%. Now, even despite the slow economic growth and some of the banking troubles that we've seen as of late, they still see a positive growth, but stock buybacks are estimated to fall by 10%. So let's get down to business. What are the stocks? that Goldman Sachs is looking at from a dividend perspective. Well, here are a few of them. Number one, Home Depot, which pays a 2.9% dividend, followed up by Ford Motor Company at 4.8% dividend. Then we get to uh, open up our beers and enjoy some cores with ticker symbol TAP, Molson Coors Group at 2.9% dividend. Number four is Wells Fargo at a 2.9%. And last but not least, Pfizer with a 4% dividend. These are all fairly strong companies. They have a nice moat. They pay some very good dividend yields. But let's do our own charting because what I'd like to see and, and, and really kind of understand when I see an article like this is put out by Goldman Sachs, a well-trusted financial research company. I, I like to understand what does it mean and how can I see it visually? So I hope this video is helpful to you because what we're going to do is let's look at the, you know, a few of the top 
companies that buy back shares versus issuing dividends. And we'll take a look at that and actually see if they actually have some merit in their estimate for the future. Now, remember, nobody's a psychic. We can't actually truly tell if these dividend stocks are gonna outperform. They're just estimating it based on the economic factors and the research that they have in front of them. The best thing we could do as investors, as I always say, is diversify. So it doesn't mean like put all your eggs in one basket and go all in on these five dividend stocks or go all in on some of the companies we'll look at that are buying back shares, or by all means, don't go all in on crypto. You gotta diversify your investments. All right, so on this particular article by US News, here are seven of the S&P 500 companies with the largest share buybacks in the third quarter, 2022. Apple, Google, Meta, Microsoft, ExxonMobil, Procter & Gamble, and Lowe's. Interesting, Lowe's versus Home Depot. So let's go over to Seeking Alpha. Let's take a look at the charting just to see the difference here. So the first thing I'm gonna do, let's plug in, and I can only do up to six. So what we'll do, we'll do Home Depot. We're gonna do Ford. We're gonna do Tap. We're gonna do Pfizer. We're gonna do Wells Fargo, and then we'll compare that to Meta. Now, right here you see it says price return. We actually wanna factor in total return. The reason you wanna always look at total return is that factors in the dividends that are being paid out. So we'll go to total return, and this paints a very interesting picture in the last year alone. So this is looking backwards, it's not looking forward because we're not psychics as I mentioned earlier, but take a look here at the difference. Now, right here off the bat, it almost looks like um, Goldman Sachs, what are you smoking? Because Meta, if, we, if you only look at Meta, is kind of, I think, doing pretty good. Now, of course, Molson, so raise your glass of Coors beer because they're doing quite well in comparison to the ones listed in today's charting. But uh, still, if you take out Molson Coors, the rest of them aren't actually performing as well as Meta, unless we look at the three-year chart. If we come up here to the three-year, paints a little bit of a different picture. Now we're looking at some differences between you have Pfizer, you have Meta at only 21% total return compared to all these other ones. Look across the board, even Home Depot, 54.9%. So wow, that does paint a very interesting picture. Let's have a look at the five year. I was expecting to see the five year meta outperforming all of them, surprisingly not. Now, of course, a lot of people are probably sitting on the video saying, yeah, okay, you're comparing Facebook. What, what about some better ones? Why don't we take a look at Google? Why don't we like, take a look at Lowe's? Well, let's plug in both. I'm gonna erase meta. I'm gonna hit add comparison and we'll add in, let's start with Google just for fun. So there it is, otherwise known as Alphabet. We'll hit compare and now let's take a look. Certainly Google is an outperformer. Now they've been buying back shares, they're doing a great job and they own the platform we're talking on right now. They own YouTube. Let's take a look at the three year. 65% still doing good, although Ford coming in here at the top. Look at Ford's return. That's remarkable for an automobile company that some people say is a little bit boomer. Now, if we look at the one year chart, um, yeah, things are a little bit different because the last year it has completely beaten up a lot of the stocks. I mean, let's face it, 2022 was a recession. So that one is a little bit interesting. Now let's take a look at Lowe's because Lowe's is interesting just because we have Home Depot up on deck here. So I'm gonna type in Lowe's, hit compare, much, much more interesting total return one year outperforming. Let's go to the three year, certainly outperforming all but Ford. And then in the five year, outperforming them all. So what you're telling me here is that dividend stocks are going to now take a step above some of these share buyback companies. That's going to be interesting to watch. Now, what I recommend you do, hop over to Seeking Alpha. I got a 50% off discount code linked in the description if you want to, where you can plug in these companies yourself. Because obviously, I'm only doing what I'm doing here on the video, but I implore you to do some research and plug in some of these different companies. Is it worth going after all of these different things? Going after maybe, okay, let me plug in Lowe's. Let me plug in Apple. Let me see which one's actually outperforming. Knowing that we're only looking at the past, we're not looking at the future, because Goldman Sachs is predicting the future. It's going to be interesting in a year from now, is this actually going to be better or worse? But here's an alternative to think about. Why not just compare something like an ETF, like a VOO, like, like we see right here. Now I plug in VOO, look at the performance of that. That's going to have a mix of all the S&P 500. Doesn't matter if it pays a dividend. Doesn't matter if it's just buying back shares. It includes all of the S&P 500. VOO tracks it all, all 500 companies. And you can see that's a great way to diversify, as I mentioned earlier, because now you're taking advantage of the dividends. You're getting a nice dividend rate. And at the same time, you're not worried about all of the things that could potentially happen. All of a sudden, Google decides they're going to do something stupid and crash their stock. We're seeing that a lot in a lot of other different stocks where they make a crazy decision and all hell breaks 
markets loose. Talk about AT and T. They cut their dividend because they decided to sell off Warner Media, and all of a sudden they're like, "Well, we're going to only focus on being a telecommunications company." As a result, we're going to cut our dividend, and now the stock goes down, and you're like, "Crap!" Because you're all in on one stock, and you're left holding the bag. Or let's talk about we had a little bit of an issue with Bud Light because of some recent controversy. Now they're having issues, and the stock goes down. Disney had some issues. See, things can happen. You don't have any control over a singular company, but if you take advantage of an ETF, which is what I'm a big fan of, especially dividend paying ETFs like SCHD and things like that, that is what's really exciting to keep an eye on. Or you could do like a dividend waterfall strategy, which is another fun way to do it. And you haven't heard of that yet? Well, then make sure you check out the dividend waterfall strategy by looking at this video next. We'll see you on the next video.